Welcome one and all, my name is Donato and welcome back to my channel where you may have seen in this post we've got a very special guest and we're going to talk about some very special new shoes that are out from uh, Nike. But before that, obviously I'm going to do a bit of a bit of admin before we bring our guest on and the shoes on and so on, which is basically if you want to get in touch with me and uh, you can find me on the socials at uh, Poet With Pace, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook at Poke With Pace. And now you can find me on Strava. Yeah, I know. I will do the recording of, yeah, kids screaming. Yes, you can find me on Strava. And if you wanted to contact me uh, directly, you can send me a private email, any info, information that you might be after or joining in, because I have got a book coming out. Hopefully, I'm just writing some things. So I've got a little ebook, and uh, you can get on the mailing list for that. And hopefully, I'll publish the first chapter within the next uh, couple of months so you can get a bit of a feel of what that's all about. But yes, we're going to do a, a new sort of section. And I don't know what I was going to call it. I was going to say, which shoes do you use? So I've done sort of three types of intros, and I'd love your votes, comments below on one, two, or three, which ones you prefer. So, um, Let's go with number one. In fact, before I go with number one, I better take that. To, there you go. <laughs> Back in Middle Earth. Right, so here's number one's video. See what you think of this. So that was number one. Yes, which shoe do you use? And here's number two. Cha-cha-cha. That was a bit of a cha-cha-cha type uh, tune. That was number two. And here's number three. Yes, that was number three. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on my special guest for today. You've seen him on this channel many times and is a great runner, sub three marathon man. He's ran many races, the same as myself, unbeknownst to me. And also he's running in the amazing Nike Invincible Run. Welcome to the show, Amrit. Hey, London, how are you? How are you doing? I'm, I'm excellent. How about you, Amrit? It's great to see you again and welcome back to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, it's good to, good to talk to you again and obviously on the topic of the invincibles and uh yeah i think uh yeah thanks for having invincible <laughs> yes it's got that type of name hasn't it it's, yeah. a, it's a bold name I th I, when i first heard of the shoe i thought it was a very bold name to work put the word yeah. invincible yeah. in a pair of shoes i know for me being a superhero fan and comic reader it does have various connotations but it's fantastic but before we go into those shoes and um, there's been mm. a, a few updates from yourself amri in terms of how um, you've started your own coaching yeah is that right yeah that's right. Yes, I many congratulations with that. Thank you, Donato. Yeah, I launched it on Monday. It's something I've been wanting to do, I think, for a couple of years. I think, to be yeah. totally honest with you, I think if it wasn't for this sort of situation where we are in being locked down, I don't think I would have done it. It's similar with the YouTube. I think um, it's something that I've been wanting to do. And obviously, being in the running scene for such a long time and obviously in the running community, being a pacer, talking to other runners, coaching them in a in indirect way. It was just something that I think naturally I enjoyed doing. And I think I've finally taken the plunge at the back end of last year and middle of last year, put a bit of work into sort of um, just to do a few of the qualifications that are required. But mostly yeah. I think I'm going to be honest with you, it's more about your experience, what you read, the articles, talking to other people and uh, yeah, launching on Monday. So yeah, super excited that, um, that coaching is live. And yeah, I'm available as a coach to ready for it's nice timing in terms of the autumn races hopefully fingers crossed everything is well and then you can get people back running and structured yeah, training yeah. so yeah no i'm really Obviously, excited about it that's brilliant brilliant i mean it's great to see uh, athletes like yourself you know sharing your experience and helping other people to uh, achieve that type of thing which is brilliant so having been on here before people can find you on uh, instagram um, and mm -hmm. through through your full name which i'll link leave the link below is there any website links to the coaching website yeah, so it's just my full I saw, name. I saw the logo, logo AG, which I thought was really clever. You know how you've done yeah, the A good. with the runner and the yeah, G. Yeah, what did you think of it, actually? It's just, I wanted to I, capture just me, basically, just me. In yeah, general, yeah, I could yeah. use and someone would look at him and be like, yep, that's Amrit. So as, as long as it does that, I'm, I was happy. It's I, 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 I liked it. And uh, obviously playing on – I know it, it's your proper surname, Gatora. Obviously, I, I – 
Donato G, the poet, hey, 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 you know, as in the Ali G. But uh, <laughs> so I uh, have a bit of fun. But yeah, the AG, I did, uh, I did like that. As I say, it's clever. I don't know who done the design for you or whether you came up with a concept, but it's clever how you've got the runner at, uh, at a particular angle and then the foot, as our foot lifts up, that becomes part of the A. Yeah. Very snazzy. Have you thought of being I, a designer? Graphic yeah, I mean, designer? I, I, I'm a, I'm a huge Roger Federer fan, so I think his logo speaks volumes, and I think it's nothing, yeah. there's, not, I mean, there's nothing more powerful than someone's initials, um, yeah. and I think um, I'll be able to use that logo going forward. And, yeah, there's a, someone actually reached out to me on Instagram who they knew as a, as a graphic design student. She's, like, 19, 20 years old, yeah. just looking for some work, so I managed to sort of work with her, and uh, she was able to, to knock up something really, really cool. So, yeah, happy brilliant. to sort of have some assistance on that one. Excellent, excellent. So that's brilliant. But yes, and, and also now with, with lockdown, lockdown, we were talking earlier, are we in lockdown? I mean, I've got my tea here. We try and keep here in Britain. Yes. <laughs> this, is, this is not what you think it is, but it's probably it's just a cis um, hydro tablet thing. <laughs> not yeah, what you yeah. think it might be. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, it's it's not. Um, yeah, we won't we won't say it. it's it's not uh, cold tea, is it? I've got a bit of cold tea in here. As we try and do, is keep calm and carry on here in Britain. You're in London. I'm here in Middle Earth. Doesn't really matter where we are. We were talking earlier. Are we in lockdown? Are we not in lockdown? Um, we could could have a proper debate here. And if um, Thomas from Germany is watching this, leave your comments here, Thomas, because he left a comment on my previous video. I had to chuckle because he was telling me what's going on in Germany. And um, yeah, it's sometimes, I guess we've got to keep a sense of humor. It is a serious matter. And, and I say, I don't, I don't want to um, get into a debate about COVID, but I was out yesterday and um, yeah, you, you wouldn't think there was, a, with the amount of traffic that was out, I was only literally just out my front door, a few hundred yards, and there was traffic jams everywhere. Um, I don't know where everybody's going, but um, yeah, yeah, is it the I, same in London? I have seen is, pictures actually. of parks. <laughs> Yeah, I, I went. I have to avoid the parks if I'm totally honest with you. It's because um, you don't go to Victoria Park anymore, then. No, I've not been for a while. But it's just I avoid the parks in case the other people out there may be a bit intimidated by a runner coming to close to them. So yeah, I do yeah. maybe for their sake. But there are some sessions I might do in a park. But yeah, I agree with you. It's very busy. Traffic is mad. There's the usual timings of school children around at, mm. at lunchtime. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, who knows where they're going? <laughs> I, don't know. I know. I know. But the the good news is racing is back yes i had the fantastic email news that my uh, half iron man it, it was pinged about a month ago with no future dates so it's due to be in june but i had an email literally day before yesterday and i did post a video before this that uh, it's now been rescheduled to july i've had so many messages from other runners there's events going on i have got a half a local half marathon not one of these big city ones for a month from now have you got any events coming up that you've booked amrit because i know we were both due to do the london half which has been moved to august um have you got any events coming um, up in the next month or I so might be doing, yeah i might be doing uh maybe like a run through in april i'm just going to try and yeah. find out which yeah. is one of the ones that i might do just maybe like a, a five or a 10k um yeah but then yeah i'm more than happy to just sort of stick with them once to be honest and see what else is available i yeah. think it's been a yeah. few months or so i think until park run comes back so but no yeah. nice uh, be nice to get out there and race it's been, it's been so long i've forgotten i've forgotten <laughs> like, like, yeah what, what do we do yeah, don't know like like i don't know it's really really it's weird actually because there was a guy i was doing some route uh, some laps in the park a few weeks ago and i was on my own and i was i was i, was, I felt as if i was running to a, i was pushing myself a little bit and then i heard footsteps coming behind me and all of a sudden, it just switched on that I'm not going to let this guy pass me, however close he's getting. I was just like, <laughs> that's the feeling. That's the feeling of like someone like that adrenaline. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was just, it was nice. It was a nice six in the six or way. I don't know. Well, it's it's interesting because I think you're when you done the London virtual, that was just running around on your own Victoria Park. I mean, I I got bent, mm. I fortunately had a, an event that I could go to, and it was a time trial. Although I was running around on my own, similar to yourself. There was other people I could see running around the uh, lake. But um, when is the last time? It's So it must be over six months then for yourself since you've been at an event of some type or a time trial. Um, so, I, yeah, I did a time trial in Victoria Park in, um, it was February. I did a 5K time trial. Okay. It was the last yeah. sort of racing type of experience I think I've yeah. had in terms yeah. of actual race. The virtual was uh, last October and then before then, 
it was last January. So mm-hmm. as terms of a proper organized event, yeah, yes, yeah. last year in January 2020. So yeah, yeah. well over, wow. well over a year. Well, fingers crossed that the London half goes ahead and Berlin marathon more to the point. But yes, anyway, without further ado, as I said, I don't know what you thought of those three uh, intros of which shoes do you use? Um, I, we, I like number three. I like number three. You like number three, did you? This, yeah, this, one, was, very this one was number three. Which shoes do you use? Amrit, have you got yours as well? Yes. Oh, see, now we've got the two different colours. I can't remember was there any other colours in there, but, um, yeah, it's it's different, isn't it? As I hold this up, it is, um, I, I don't know, how, how can we describe this, uh, Amrit? How, how would you talk through the shoe? I think anyone who's used a Nike shoe before, um, and in particular Zoom X as a foam, you'll you'll know the feeling and you'll know the feeling obviously this doesn't have a, a carbon fiber plate in it which is mm-hmm. which is very evident but it's a very soft spongy it's responsive it's responsive yeah. it's i don't know it's, it's just very enjoyable it's very comfortable i think it's just a very comfortable feeling yeah. for a shoe and i think for me it's i mean i've had other shoes that i would use in its place for easy mm-hmm. days um, yeah. I haven't touched them since I've got a hold of this. So I think that's saying yeah. something in terms of yeah. the shoe itself. Wow. So before we go into the actual detail, so we're going to cover, for those who are watching and like a bit of detail, we're going to go through the, uh, you know, the what what the shoes are about, why we're using these shoes, and and how do they help us as uh, runners. But just to give a bit of background for myself, I've done about, uh, these are, as you can tell, they're white and they're still pretty white. I mean, there's a bit of mud at the bottom. So I've only done about 40 miles in mine. Um, How many miles have you done so far in yours, Ambris? I've done 310 miles in these. Woo! Three and and they still look And that's what a 310 mile shoe looks like. Wow. It's, um, for me, when I first got in them, as you uh, mentioned earlier, there was, there was a bit of um, video freeze in there, but yeah, there's there's so much foam. When I stepped out, I went for a walk in them first, and oh, I can't really <laughs> explain how it well how it felt. It was like I was walking on a uh, you know those foam mattress, the memory foam mattresses. A pillow, yeah, it yeah. Felt, or a pillow. It felt like when I was walking on it, I thought, what the hell are these? And of course, the noise they make, I sounded a bit like a stormtrooper, you know. <laughs> Um, so, or a Roman legionnaire or something like that. So those were the two immediate things that came to mind. And I think, as, as we mentioned, when we're out on the run, some folks do tend to get a bit um, uh, stressed if we're, if we're on the footpath or something. And, uh, but they can certainly hear me coming with these shoes because it's like... <laughs> so they're getting a good sound warning. But it was a very spongy, very soft... Um, as you say, I mean, they are, they're definitely geared, you know, in terms of, you know, the shoes that they are, the, what, what, what's in them. They're definitely geared, as you've shown in the bottom here. I mean, the tread is one of my big bugbearers is the lack of tread on some of these really good shoes. But these have amazing tread. And as you can see, the way it's shaped, it's shaped as the foot. So, mm. you know, we've got the arch in the middle and then the heel to protect and when you've got the amount of foam here i mean here just squidging it you know you can squeeze yeah, right into it it's, it's very it's very soft like it's it's definitely it's, a lot is it uh, for me I, I feel as if it's a lot different compared to the vapor fly it's a lot softer yeah like yeah, i can't yeah. physically do that on like a, the maybe like the vapor fly next percent and yeah, yeah i think yeah you're right in terms of the sh- it's I initially thought that this area here would be an area where it would wear pretty thing, uh, pr- pretty yeah. well in terms of the material would fray away, but it's actually worn pretty well. I think in terms of yeah, longevity, you're definitely going to get a hell of a lot more miles, even more than I've got at the moment out of this shoe, mm-hmm. considering mm-hmm. it is um, mm-hmm. just over 500k. And yeah. obviously, you can yeah. see that's a particular area that I potentially land in, and but it hasn't, it doesn't really affect. The ride of the shoe which i think is important and i think mm, yeah it's mm. definitely geared towards that easy day sort of 
running. Mm. Uh, definitely, definitely feel as if it's in that yeah. in that yeah. area. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, if we go say if we go from say the top to the bottom in terms of the features, um, I found that the top here, there's certainly a lot of cushioning all the way around on the inside and out. So in terms of how the foot slips in, it does slip in quite beautifully and, and easy. Mm. There is a lot here, and for a lot of shoes that I use, especially guys who are running with more minimalist type shoes and the faster type shoes, this is almost like contradictory to that. But for me, it gives a lot of um, support. I normally use the um, tight, the extra hole there, and then lock it in. But with these shoes, I didn't need to do that. Yeah, um, I don't know how you found it. It's it's it just there's there's a lot at the top sort of protecting our feet um so the top part certainly a lot of um comfort and support and i think the support comes through with the heel around here it's so rigid it almost comes across like a uh, support shoe you know mine i still can't i know you've done uh, 10 times more yeah. distance than myself but mine are very bit mine are very flexible now it's yeah, very very this, I clearly need to wear mine in a bit more. And the thing that, that stands out for me is this like platform. It reminds me of back in the 70s when we had platform shoes because um, that's almost like a, a complete section there that, uh, yeah, it's, it's a complete like a bracket gripping mm -hmm. hold of the foot and, uh, and then with a massive amount of foam again at the back yeah. so which takes us to the foam itself which is they say the zoom x foam which is pretty there's so much here you know if you look at that that's there's almost two inches of foam this is incredible and then at the bottom there capped off with wonderful gripping sole which i i find uh, fantastic as a shoe you know in terms of what it what it is there's a lot of shoe there, isn't it? I, I think, yeah, I think there's you know, a lot of, both physically and uh, psychologically, isn't there? Yeah, I have to agree with you in terms of the upper. I, I, I felt as if when I first put the shoe in, that it was extremely comfortable. Like it didn't mm -hmm. really wrap around um, my foot. I, I still to this day, actually, I'm not too sure why they did put the cushioning on the outside of the shoe. I think it just yeah. adds a little bit of rigidity to the actual yes uh, yes around the back of the achilles and obviously the ankle but the tongue itself i think they nailed it with the tongue in terms of the thickness yeah. the, how soft it is and it sort of mm. sits really really nicely um again i agree with you i laced it through just the one hole i, I felt as if i didn't need to have an additional lockdown because a i didn't need to and b the laces weren't um that long, long enough, enough yeah to, yeah to do that so i felt as if it was fine um in terms of breathability yeah, I think in terms of the looseness of the mesh, you do you will it will loosen up a little bit over time, but not hugely. Um, but in terms of the foam, yeah, you get the general sort of creasing on the foam even after three three or so hundred miles. But it still generally looks pretty good for the age yeah. of the shoe yeah. and obviously the mileage that it's on. And I think yeah, definitely minimum at least five hundred up to six hundred miles out of the shoe before you maybe you start yeah. feeling you're losing that sort of springiness or sponginess. But I haven't actually felt that yet on the shoe. I was about to ask you, obviously preempted my next uh, question was, have you started to feel after the 300 miles that the uh, foam is not as supportive, but you um, haven't found that? It's no, I, no, I still feel like it's still giving me the impact protection. It's still giving yeah, me the support yeah. and um, it's still giving me a very comfortable ride in the shoe. So I feel as if mm, it's still mm. doing that really, really well. Yeah, yeah. Which leads us to why has nike brought these out um because all the talk we get to uh, you know a lot of the talk is the uh, the carbon plates and the fast and the speedy and i often talk about the training you know that uh, and i always refer to my bible of the 80 20 i know it says triathlon but it's 80 20 running <clears> as well <throat> so a lot of the shoe talk is about the 20 percent of the training that we do is all the fast and the speedy but 80 percent needs to be slow and easy so Nike have brought this out as a, not even a 100%. This is a 200% easy run shoe. Is, mm. Do you not think, Amri, this is... Yeah, I think I've tried this. Although up. I did pick up some speed in it <laughs> and my strides yeah, at the end of an easy run. You know, various set of paces and uh, we're talking like anything from like a nine minute mile down to strides at like four 30 minute miles. So yeah, yeah. it can do them fairly, fairly fine. 
what, what you don't find is that same propulsive nature that you get off a carbon yeah. plate issue, like when you land and he sort of pushes you back off all that way, yeah. when he pushes you back off. But again, it's very much tailored. I think is what I've seen from people, we see from the feedback from the YouTube as well, is that it doesn't suit everyone because they feel as if it's a tiny bit clunky. Because if you look at the shape of the shoe, you've got mm. a very wide base at the bottom and then you've got a sort mm. of very wide footbed. Some people who are maybe land um, on their heels might not like the effect of it rolling them through um compared to other shoes where they're a little bit narrow hence why i feel as if i am getting that where they're more than anything mm -hmm. on all my other shoes because of the fact they're a lot more wider but for me i've landed quite midfoot um yeah. fourth, so it's not too much of a problem but in terms mm -hmm. of the actual why they made the shoes just to generally help um injury prevention it was all around yeah. injury prevention and the width of the shoe is to aid stability so you did you did mm. mention that about structure it felt like very yeah. structured around the around the heel mm. that's exactly mm. what it's meant to do in terms of um aid injury prevention along with the infinity react one and two um they've got this rocker sort of shape so it sort of rolls your foot in as you sort of go in so that's the thinking behind it and obviously as you said 80 percent of our miles are in that easy um sort of zone so you want something which is really very comfortable but this does help you um with impact protection biggest thing you want is to try and protect your legs and your body and um yeah. why would you not want a big slab of foam that can help you do that obviously it needs to be comfortable too yeah yeah i mean you, you did mention that uh it's nike because you went into some detail in your video review about the these shoes that it's part of the nike series where they're looking to reduce the risk of injuries and it's, it's quite a key project. Do you want to tell us more about that? Because obviously you've, you've delved a lot more into this, uh, Amrit, about yeah, just... what Nike are doing and how they're planning. Because I think the Invincible run, I loved the Invincible as well. I only, only had one and I kept them. And they're one of the few shoes I, I ran all the way through. 800K, I've done over 500 miles. They were still fine, um, but they were too slippery for the wet conditions. So that was my only one bugbear is, is the grip on them but as a shoe. And for running in, they felt fantastic. And I think this one ticks the box with the grip now. So they've dealt with it that way. So I've loved how they've done that. And this is a, a step on from that now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So it's part of their Project Fearless. And I think with Project Fearless, it, they looked at um, a number of runners in terms of their data and obviously how they landed on mm -hmm. uh, with, with the shoes that they're wearing. And essentially, they what they wanted to do was create a platform um, based on three things. Um, the foam, the rocker on how it lands, and obviously the traction and the upper as well. So what they've tried to do is naturally, as you land on this shoe, because it is so stacked up at the back, you mm. will sort of land and then roll yourself through. Um, and that sort of creates a nice sort of motion of your foot. And with the impact protection of the foam and the width of the heel and the forefoot, it's just giving you that stability. So if you can plant your foot down more onto the ground, you're going to, you're going to create a nice base for your foot. Um, mm -hmm. Again, with what the Infinite React does as well, they're just stable platforms. So if you've got quite a narrow mm -hmm. platform, it's just going to create a lot of instability. And so with the heel clip, as you mentioned, it just gives you that nice wrap around and the upper itself is a very sort of breathable. Um, I personally didn't like the Infinity React. Um, I just felt as if yeah. they were a little bit, uh, a little bit too firm for me. And I find with mm -hmm. React after about 100 or 200 miles, it just doesn't respond back to you, which is mm -hmm. not what zoom x so, so in terms of performance for me this does the complete opposite hence why i like the shoe because you still feel yeah, responsible yeah. i want to feel a little bit of give back from the shoe so yeah that mm -hmm. is the fearless system and it's essentially nike's claim to help prevent injuries obviously there's still people can still get injured let's just get that let's yeah get, yeah this uh, isn't yeah, the magic pill <laughs> it's not if you buy a shoe from this system or whatever it is is that and you don't do the other things outside of that you can still get injured so don't blame the shoe so yeah it's just a tool to help you run better uh, but you still yeah. got to do the other things so don't absolutely. forget to do that absolutely I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that amrit because i see so many especially on the socials where people seem to think that uh, you buy you know it's always that magic bullet people seem to be looking for you know that magic app that magic pill that magic uh, cup of tea or whatever the magic shoe and and there's a lot of people who think that having shoe rotations and stops you getting injuries um well, no, you still have to do, as you mentioned, the other things. I, I, I love the fact that you've done your um, pre-run drills on one of your videos. I think you posted it on Instagram as well, which mm. um, I asked people, you know, how do you reduce the risk of injuries on uh, Twitter? And I had 
literally hundreds and hundreds of replies, yeah, because it, it's clearly a hot topic, along with Strava privacy. I'll do a separate video for that. <laughs> that was another hot topic. Um, but the key thing that came out from people was cross-training, a warm-up, cool-down. No, Nobody, in fact, yeah, I was trying to think out of that. Nobody mentioned about shoes or shoe rotation. So oh. there, there must be some kind of myth going around that if you swap around different shoes, I think um, – the shoe rotation thing is because a lot of people, in terms of how the feet strike, if you're wearing different shoes, it will help your foot change in different ways, and that helps reduce the risk. But as you quite rightly said, Amri, I'm glad you mentioned that, is putting on these shoes isn't the magic bullet to stop <laughs> injuries. Um, yeah, you can still run too far too fast. You did mention about some of the speeds you were getting at. I was shocked when I'd done – yesterday I'd done some easy uh, – no, Tuesday – so we're recording today on April the 1st. Yes, it is afternoon, so we're not going to do it. This is an April Fool, by the it's way. Not, it's not an <laughs> April Fool. It's not a myth. I'm not holding something that's going to vanish and not available. So it's yeah. actually and, real and I can touch it. And uh, with Easter coming up, by the time you watch this video, it will be Easter. So there's no magic eggs hidden inside there. But um, I went out. Yeah, it's Tuesday. Just a, a quick 45-minute easy run. And at the end, I thought, let's throw in some strides with this that's for how fast can i go in these now i just done some strides and then when i got back i think my garmin was broken because it said i was running two minute 40 kilometer pace in my strides which i don't know what that equates to but all that's i can 430, say 430 ish is it that's is it 430 yeah, yeah something like so that yeah it was so fast that I was trying to slow myself down when I finished the strides. And I thought, wow. Now, I almost felt like they were may me maybe these were like, uh, you know, the Inspector Gadget, bouncy, bouncy. Um, that's how they felt. So I, I don't know. Maybe I've discovered something by accident. Could these be, whilst they're geared as easy runs, could they be? Because I've done, I remember it, it would have been three years ago now, maybe. Yeah, three years ago. I had a pair of Ultra shoes. I can't remember the um, the name of the brand. Sorry, the name of the model. But I called them my moon boots. And I was coming out of quite a bad injury. And I just wanted to do easy, easy, steady runs. And it was sort of recommended as a good support shoe. Bear in mind, this is three years ago. So I put them on. And I always used to get a lot of laughs because they did look like moon boots on my feet. Um, but I ran a, a 92 half um and not at full pelt, and it was on a very undulating hilly course. So I thought, well, it just goes to show, you know, if you've got the fitness, um, almost whatever shoes you've got, unless you're targeting, you know, sort of like a 72-minute a half, then maybe these might not be the best ones. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, but for, for a lot in the mid-pack running is, um, you know, who knows, it, it could be work, but see what works for you. So this is Project Fearless. That's so how, how, how do you think these – help in particular what are the key features you think amrit of this shoe that helps someone with to do in the easy runs and the long runs i think first and foremost is for me the shoe is very comfortable and i think mm. I, I i don't want to potentially fall into the trap of always wearing a plated shoe for all my runs i think that's quite mm. important um so i think this does a really good job in terms of filling that gap and for me again you can take it into a range of paces i've run like sort of 6 30 pace and i can tell the difference between running sort of mm. faster and obviously at a slower pace definitely but in terms of an easy shoe it's just something which i want something soft on my feet and i've worn vomeros i've worn loads of different other shoes and i can feel the ground in them so yeah, in terms yeah. of where this fits yes i can feel the ground but i can also feel as if um, you are actually compressing the foam every single time you do steps. So that's yeah. perfect for easy mileage. And easy mm -hmm. mileage is something that you mentioned. It should fill up 70 to 80 percent of your week. So yeah. doing it in something very comfortable and something comfortable for you uh, in your running style is is key. Um, and because there is such a slab of foam, as you just said, like almost two inches, it's going to do a really good job of A, locking you down, B, protecting your legs, and C, giving you a nice, comfortable ride. And those three probably tick a lot of boxes for people to yeah, at least yeah. enjoy the run that they're on. That that's absolutely brilliant. I mean, you've you've made it so succinct. The, the feeling the ground of some I used to say a like, lot. I thought it was maybe just me, but you, you've said it as well. What what do you mean by feeling the ground when you mentioned you're running in the Vomeros, which is quite a different shoe uh, mm. to these? Um, I've not run in the Vomeros myself personally, but um, 
but I know what you mean about feeling the ground. What what do you mean by feeling ground when you're running? Is there a, a sensation? Yeah. I think the best way to describe that, if you ran barefoot, you're feeling mm -hmm. the ground. So okay. That feeling of how you feel when you run barefoot and sort of the, the absorbing of the the impact of going through your body. If mm -hmm. you can get, if you put a pair of shoes on, you can still feel that. It's basically it's it's cushioning your ride, but it's still doing uh, not a great job in terms of protecting you on the long term. You can long you need some things. It might potentially expose you to a few niggles here and there. So, so it's something like this helps in that way in terms of it just gives you the opportunity and the and the feeling that something is protecting you more than just you connecting to the ground. I think that's that's the feeling yeah. that I get out of you. I can feel the ground. I'm not saying you cannot feel it, but I just feel as if that because there is such a huge amount of foam there, it's just compressing more like a sponge and it's sort of just popping you back up as well. The thing is, yeah, yeah. with ZoomX, it, they do state that you get 85% energy return back into... Uh, so every time you put your foot down, you put 100% of your force down and they give you 85% back. So 15% is losses due to potentially how you've landed but if you can get something which is giving you 85 percent of your force back you would why, why would you not want that it would help you in your stride or help you become a more mm. efficient mm. more economical mm. runner with your where you pick up your feet where you sort of swing through your stride yeah. as well so yeah, yeah it's, it's a good shoe in that respect to do that 85 percent return it's interesting you mentioned that because when i was interviewing with um neil danby who's one of the top uh, veteran runners um and he's going for his um great britain record 1500 meters and world record he, he was talking about certain shoes that helps him in terms of the easy runs and running really slowly and what what you've just said sort of matches with that it's about protecting our feet um especially um whilst you're considerably younger than me and me and neil is neil saying you know when people are getting into their 50s and 60s they you know want to need to protect their ankles and knees a lot more and these types of shoes certainly help that um mm -hmm. But obviously, you don't need to wait till you get into your 50s and 60s to protect your body. You can protect it from now, today. So whatever age you are, whether you're 18 or 80, um, protect, because we want longevity, don't we, Amrit? We want to be around running for the next 30, 40, 50 years. Yeah, um, exactly. exactly. Every, everything we can do to help. So this Project Fearless, is there any plans of other shoes coming out from what you've read from uh, Nike? As far as I can, as far as I've seen, it's just the two that are part of that of that the three actually. There's three shoes. There's the Myla React, which is one of them. There's yeah. the Invincible Run, which is number two, and then there's the Infinite React, which is three. I think them three are all now in their two of them are in their second iteration. This is obviously in its first. Yeah. Um, I think this is their little closed sort of system in terms of handling easy running. And honestly, like I think if you think of this shoe compared to a Pegasus. Mm. I, t I wouldn't i personally wouldn't know why i'd pick up a pegasus if this was shoe was around for um, easy runs yeah because yeah. pegasus is an incredibly narrow shoe where this is not narrow this is for me yeah i've yeah. got a lot of comments comments off the youtube that this is not a traditional nike fit of a shoe no no this bit here is not nike they've done Absolutely. something different in terms of the way they fit more people that toe box is normally narrow on a Nike shoe. It's not yeah. narrow on the shoe. And I don't have yeah. wide feet or anything like that. And I know it's a lot of people in the comment and the feedback was that I can actually wear a shoe that is actually comfortable and not too mm. uh, sort of Pegasus got over pretty much a reputation of being very narrow through the midfoot. Yes. Yeah. And obviously and narrow through the yeah. toe box yeah. as well. So whereas this is not. So I think they've done something different. They're taking a different approach with this one and it seems to seems to make a lot of other runners happy. Yeah, I, I think so too. I have the, all those you'd mentioned, I didn't realize that they were all part of the uh, Project Fearless. So I've tried the Myla, um, I've had the Infinity, and obviously now I'm on the Invincible. I have tried the uh, Pegasus as well, and the Pegasus Shield. And uh, yeah, you definitely feel the road more. And, and I have to agree with you is that um, a choice between these for easy runs and the Pegasus, um, it's, it's, it's a no contest, really, f for me personally. Um, I'd love to hear people's comments below what, what they think. Do they agree with myself and Amrit? Um, but I do know because, I mean, I feel quite fond of the Pegasus because I had the Pegasus. I don't, what numbers are we up to now? I think I had the 37. I've uh, got a pair of to now? from my first marathon. I think the Pegasus 24s. Okay, okay. 
I'm going to, I think we're here somewhere. They're here somewhere. Uh, but, is um, it 37 now that it's up to? Like, yeah, 38 is coming very soon in the next few months. Yeah. So my first one where I ran my first half marathon was the Pegasus 22, I think. or It might be the same as yours. It might be the 23. And, uh, and I only bought them because they were on a sale at the time. I think they were 50 quid um, from some shop. And they fitted fine. And I thought, yeah, go with them. Um, but they obviously how they've iterated, it's very, very different now. But mm. um, it's quite bold, don't you think, that Nike, you know, have done something as different as this, you know, compared to um, the other shoes they've had, as, as you say, uh, more narrower. And they're clearly targeting a more broader range of, of uh, customers. And I think when we talk about the price points, that, that sometimes can be a bit of a sore point with people. Yeah. Is, um, it is at the higher end, but then there is a lot. There's a lot of shoe here because when when I talk about a lot of shoe, before I talk about the price, the weight. Um, when I weighed it on my scales, I think it was one gram short of three hundred grams, which for those in the states, I think it's ten point five ounces, or ten point five eight ounces. Um, so that's a lot of shoe in there. It's heavy. Um, you know, there's a lot of materials to support a lot of foam. But what what was the uh, price point? So these are these are 160 pounds here in the UK, which is which is steep for, yes. for a easy shoe. I mean, not going to lie, this was the biggest downside that I said yeah. for um, the shoe. Do I think you get your value out of it? That's mm. a, it's a it's a difficult question because a you got to commit to the shoe, and b you got to get the the mileage out of the shoe to say is it to, yeah. to basically yeah. say you get the value out of it. For me, probably halfway during its life. It's an expensive, easy day shoe, but there is a lot of shoe for your money. There's a lot of technology in this shoe for your money, and there's a lot of things that put this over other shoes that are in the market. The, I think the the comparison from the direct rival is probably the New Balance 1080 version 10 mm -hmm. and 11, um, yeah. which I'm not sure how much they actually cost. Those but are the fresh foam ones, yeah. The fresh foam. So that's probably a, a direct comparison, but. For me, the best phone on the market is Zoom X, and you cannot be feeling if you ever worn a pair of Vaporfly, Next Percent, or Alphafly, whichever, you will know that that phone does a lot of wonders. And to get down an easy day shoe, I mean, it was crying out for it. I mean, I think there was a bit of, there was a little bit of Zoom X in the Pegasus Turbo, not all of it. That Pegasus yeah, Turbo yeah. didn't have full, and obviously there's a little bit in the Tempo Next Percent in the forefoot, but not a complete shoe. So this is actually Nike's first non-plated shoe full zoom x so and i yeah, think yeah yeah the price is expensive but if you like nike if you want something which has a nice soft cushion plush ride this is a shoe that's going to do that job for you absolutely and i think even for those who may not because i think there's with various brands we get we always get people who um are, are haters or whatever on certain brands doesn't matter what people release or wherever and i try and keep open-minded on all brands um and there's some coming back in like we've seen Reebok have come back in, Puma have come back into the game, which is, I think it's great for the sport and hopefully with, with it makes it a bit more competitive with the shoes. Yeah, I would agree the price is high um, in comparison to other easy shoes. Um, I think the prices have always tended to just keep going up and up and up. But for me, um, if it reduces the risk of injury and it helps us get easy runs and it's looking after our feet, me, me personally, and um, whatever people may think of Nike or any other brand, it, it's a no-brainer, really. Um, yeah, for I, me, I, comfort I, is is more important because having been there, and we've all been injured, is the costs of physios and loss of time running and so on. Um, it's more than paid for in in a pair of shoes like this. I think I, that's just my viewpoint, and we're all entitled to our own viewpoints, aren't we? <laughs> Um, yeah, I have, I have to agree with you that I think the biggest thing that I that, that 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 this shoe gives me is the enjoyment factor. I actually enjoy yeah. my easy ones. Not saying mm -hmm. that I didn't enjoy them before. Yeah, I was doing them because it's necessary to do them. But it's almost like if it was a bit more grindy, I actually enjoy. It you running. enjoy it more now. Yeah, and it gets, it just makes it feel like a nicer experience. And if a shoe yeah. can do that for one hundred sixty pounds, sign me up, and I'll go and get yeah. another pair. Yeah. Because yeah. Why would you not want to? Like I said, yeah. going back to what you mentioned about the book, the title of that book that you held up was 80% yeah. to 20%. If 80% of your week that you spend out and about on your feet is in, in a shoe that 
you actually enjoy running in that's that's it that's it right on the nail on the head right there that it needs yeah. to be something that gives you that comfort and again you're right when you are injured and you do value and you do look back and you think what mistakes did i make was i wearing a pair of shoes gone past their sell by date were they giving me enough impact protection were they actually helping me or hindering me during my running and then you're all got the bills of the physio the osteos and all this sort of stuff yeah, then yeah, yeah you're thinking of things that in your trade and your tools that you could have to help you and I don't honestly believe this is something that will help a lot of runners out there. As long as you can find the fit is not too clunky, um, yeah, yeah. and it's a smooth ride for you, then it's it's a good shoe. It's a good yeah. shoe to run. It, it's definitely worth. Um, and also with the price, I am me being uh, discount don is uh, that there there is often sales and discount codes available. And in fact, mm -hmm. I think right now I, I did get an email from Puma for Easter, 20% off everything, even their carbon plated ones, which there was no discount up, up till then. So, uh, and I know Nike regularly do discounts and I think my birthday is coming up in May. So Nike will send me a discount voucher. Yeah, so I, I might, off, yeah. is it 25%? So I might uh, stock up on a, a, maybe a different color. I don't know or the same color, but, but as you've quite rightly said, Amrit is, is try them on. I, and again, I'm not here selling for um, Nike or other shoes, there are a lot of the brands now, especially during lockdown, you can order online, try them out, go running in them. And if after 30 days or 60 days, depending on what the company is, I think Hoka do a 30 day challenge. I think Brooks do 90 day challenge. Nike might be 60 days, wherever it is. I think when you try these on, when, when the shops used to be open, you could get on a treadmill and you could tell almost straight away whether they were good, bad or indifferent for you. And I always go with initial feel as if they feel good, as as you said yourself, Amrit, is try them. If they feel good, great. If they don't, then as good as they may be, don't take them. It's a bit like, I don't know, if someone has a headache and they take a certain paracetamol or aspirin drug that works for them, it might not work for you. So uh, I don't know. Am I, yeah. Why am I comparing drugs with shoes? But <laughs> For some so, people, drugs, shoes are like yeah. a drug. Yes, <laughs> I think yeah, I have to. Agree. I have to agree with you. Actually, the, the return policy for these for shoe companies and definitely stepped up a game in the last yeah. year or so. Yeah. I actually sent back a pair of the, the Romeros I had. I'd actually trashed them. They were so bad, and I put them in the box, and they just happily sent. They just happily accepted them back. And I was like, "That's what they, it says on the states on the email. Do what you want in them. Send them back. So if you are ooing and ahhing about a particular shoe or a brand." Yeah, it's very much likely that you can run in them. Try before you buy, um, and the refunds um, sort of system is very sort of efficient, and you will get your money back. So it's not doom and gloom in case you do um, not like the shoe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. As I say, I, I have uh, returned uh, uh, some Nike pairs, and it is pretty prompt. They give you all the stickers and everything. I mean, of, of, of some of the brands I have returned, I think they make it so easy for you to return. All the labels are already in the box. So there's nothing for, there's nothing for you to print out or anything and it's very very slick their ordering system is very slick i mean they are in a uh, in another league i think in terms of uh, looking after customers and so on but uh, but yeah i think we've we we could wax lyrical for uh, quite a while longer can't we Amrit? but i think for those who are watching listening um I think um, we, we've done enough for, for our first stage. Maybe we'll do another one after, say, 500 miles or 1,000 miles. I have done some 1,000 miles in various shoes, and um, and that's got quite a response. So who knows? Do you think we could take these to 1,000? I think it'll be a good bet, to be honest. I think it'll be interesting, very, very interesting. This will be yeah. completely old, though. <laughs> <laughs> like, a, like a slick pair of tyres. Well, yeah. yes, it, It'd be interesting with these buds when they do wear out. As you say, on that particular point, that's worn out. But if it did become hyper slick, is what would the rubber be like in the wet without one, those little pads? One, one question for you. How do you find it in the wet of different sort of season, uh, traction, good weather, bad weather, mud, uh, rain and wind? Um, for, for me, I've not been out because I've only had them um, for a couple of weeks now. So... I've not been running in the rain. It's not rained here. In fact, we've had a bit of a heat wave, haven't we, mm. um, here in the UK? So I've not been out in the wet yet, but I did want to pick you up on that point when you said when you're enjoying the run. Um, obviously, before this, I had the uh, Infinity Run, and I remember running around Victoria Park when I was down in East London. I know that's your one of your local parks that you run around, is that uh, I remember finishing my long runs 
20 miles and some of my videos where I'll be filming at the end, I'd look back at them and think, wow, I felt fresh. I was, you know, I wasn't, I didn't feel battered, bashed, which as you say, whilst I enjoy my long, easy runs, um, and I always, you know, in my mind, I'm, I feel fantastic, but it was the body. And I, I do recall going back over the years, some of the long runs, I'd spend a lot of the Sunday afternoon literally just sitting on the sofa, eating pizza or watching TV or lying in bed recovering. Whereas when I was finishing them with the infinity run, um, I just felt great. And I was happy to go out in the afternoon, having a walk around the park, go shopping. I didn't feel as battered. Um, well, yeah. That's my technical word, battered. I know it means something else as well. I don't know what it means in the States, but uh, my body wasn't bashed up or smashed up. It felt it felt good. I think it's. I think that's a very good good point in terms of um, just picking shoes generally um, based on maybe a review that you might have had, or even like the technology. If you do a little bit of research, you can sort of whittle down what the shoes that will help you, and obviously those that might not do so much. And I think you're right. If, like I said, in terms of the energy thing, the energy return that if it can help save your legs, if a shoe can help save your legs why would you not want to buy into that? Because yeah. if you don't yeah. have to spend a Saturday afternoon with stuff to do around the house uh, or st things to go and see, whatever, then and you're, if you're not uh, feeling too good because you're so um, tired from the run, running shouldn't make you knackered on a week to week unless you're literally pushing yourself to the absolute limit. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think it does a great job. But, yeah, you're right in terms of that battered feeling. Definitely I feel as if after a marathon, definitely in a pair of paper flies, is that being able to still live a life after the race. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think um, you know. Fingers crossed. We we get to Berlin. We we can do a bit of um, sightseeing, not not sightseeing, but uh, be able to walk to the restaurant in Berlin yeah. and get some. I I I, I uh, live in hope. But the Sunday thing, if most of my long runs on the Sunday, and then Tuesday I might have some uh, intervals or short runs. So it's allowing the body to recover in time to start the next session, which I guess is one of the reasons that. Uh, sometimes it, which helps reducing the risk of injury but um, mm. but yeah amrit thank you so much for sharing your time and knowledge on uh, this video and i've found it very informative and useful and it's great to see sharing similar loves different from different perspectives different views but it's coming to the same conclusion that uh, they're a great pair of shoes and i, I would highly recommend them as, as an easy run but as amrit said is try before you buy and depending on where you are in the world certainly here in the uk there's good returns policies and i'm sure nike will do the same in other countries as well was there anything yeah. you wanted to add amrit at the end no, I was say, it's good to hear that people getting positive reviews from the shoe i think it's uh it's when when, when i i think is i wanted to give an honest opinion and generally it wasn't mm. honest not just because I, i'm a i like nike shoes whatever but it generally was a shoe that I enjoyed wearing and um, everything I said about it sort of raining through other people as well. So it's yeah, quite nice yeah. to see that um, people have that experience. No, but um, thank you for having me on again, Donato. It's been always a pleasure to sort of talk to you about shoes or anything running related. So yeah, hopefully everyone took some value out of um, the different experiences that we have in the shoe. So brilliant! Think it helps other runners out there. I think so too. We're all out there to help and share. And as you say, maybe we'll, maybe this can become a bit of a uh, popular slot. I'll play, I've got to play this one more time, but I did like this one as well. Yes, it's almost a bit of, um, I can't remember the name of the band, but it's very 80s type stuff. But uh, for those who remember the 80s music, you know, leave, but leave some comments below what you thought in terms of the feedback from myself and Amrit about the shoes. Do you use this shoe as well? I'd love to hear from you. And also, if there's any other long run, easy run shoes, because that's what we'd like to talk about. And other shoes as well. What do you use on your long, easy run? So thank you so much for watching, listening, wherever you are in the world. And we'll see you all very soon. Bye, bye. Bye-bye.